Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if female Deku had cat quirk. If you guys enjoy this movie comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content and live a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist. The author of the story by Waterwolf506 from Wattpad. So let's start the video. It had happened that it was a baby girl that was glowing in front of her parents. That caused more and more girls to be born with powers called quirks. The men waited patiently for their shining moment but alas that moment never came. It was then discovered that only the female DNA held the quirk genes and the males held none. Over the years, the relationship between males and females changed to where the females were like the alphas and were seen as powerful beings, while the males were nothing more than breeding mules that would provide the women children. Even the relationship between the females changed as well. This was due to some women being born with a quirk while some were born with nothing or were better known to the world as the quirkless. The population nowadays has now become where percent of females have quirks, percent of females are quirkless, and percent are males that have no powers at all. With these powers coming into play, the world changed their job roles to where there were females as heroes and villains. However that is about to change because there will be one boy that will become the first male hero to overcome not by a quirk and not just from an outside power to come to him, but it will be due to his heroic heart and determination that will change and save lives. This is the story of Izuka Midoriya or as his soon-to-be hero named the bad luck of all villains, Chat Noir. We start off with him playing with his toys in his room. Inko, Izuku, come downstairs please. Izuku, coming mommy. Izuku heads downstairs to his mother and sister waiting for him. They put their shoes on, Inko locks the door they are walking towards the mall. Izuku, where are we going mommy? Inko, we just need to get a few things at the mall. While at the mall a certain blonde mother, her husband and daughter are also in the middle of some shopping when the mother spots Inko and calls out to her. Mitsuki, gasp Inko-chan Inko stops in her tracks and looks towards at the blonde woman Inko stops in her tracks and looks towards at the blonde woman. Inko, tl. Mitsuki-chan, what a coincidence. Inko, tl. Mitsuki-chan, what a coincidence. Masaru, good to see you Inko. Inko, tl. good to see you too Masaru. And so the adults start to have a deep conversation not paying attention to the children. Katsumi, hey Deku, how about we play a fun game? Sure Kak and I love games. What do you have in mind? Katsumi, hide and seek. You go hide and me and Izumi will come find you. Izuku, okay. Goes off to hide Izumi. Why did you do that? I don't want to play with my useless brother. Katsumi, calm down. I have a plan. Once we find him we will simply beat him up. Izumi, oh, good idea. And so the two tormentors wait for a while unknown to them that Izuku actually heard what they were going to do and got really scared, and so he started to run. Not long after, unknown to him how they had found him they started a wild goose chase until he made a sharp turn and hid into a small thrift store. Izuku, Huff's TTD hat W is close. When Izuku had caught his breath, he really started to look at the shop around him. It had a really weird aura to it. There were different bottles of weird liquid in them along with different plants, jewelry, animal heads, books and more weird stuff. Izuku then kept walking and looking at the things around him until he pumped into a young lady who was wearing some sort of whale around her mouth area. Izuku then kept walking and looking at the things around him until he pumped into a young lady who was wearing some sort of whale around her mouth area. Hello there little one, what are you doing here all alone? Izuku. S is a sorry Ms. I wasn't looking. It is alright little one, but tell me why do you look like you were running away from a pack of wolves? Izuku in a sad tone. My sister and her friend were chasing me so they could beat me up. Tisk 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 girls these days. Always picking on little boys just because they have cool powers. Tell you what, how about you go ahead and sit down over there at the table while I make us some lavender tea to calm your nerves. Izuku, tea 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 thank you. And so the mysterious lady went to the back of the store to make the lavender tea while Izuku kept on looking at the things around him. Not long after the woman came out with two cups of warm tea and handed one to Izuku. So tell me about your sister and your friend, you say they were trying to trick you into a game of hide and seek so they could beat you up afterwards. Izuku, sips tea sigh yeah, 
although I don't understand why they hate me so much, I literally have done nothing wrong to them and they just beat me up without a good reason. Hums these are dark times indeed, males losing their rightful place in society and only being used as breeding mules to grant women children. Izuku, um, Ms. Just call me Marinette dear. Izuku, um, okay Mrs. Marinette, but pardon for me asking if it's personal but what's with that box over there? Izuku points to a medium-sized box in a corner of the room which looked really old and had some sort of Chinese symbol on it. Marinette, oh that's just a plain old jewelry box which keeps some of the jewelry I sell in this drawer, do you want to have a look? Marinette, oh that's just a plain old jewelry box which keeps some of the jewelry I sell in this drawer, do you want to have a look? Izuku, yes please. And with the lady walked over to the box, picked it up and brought it over to the table where Izuku was sitting. When she opened it there were peas of jewelry on display. Two were brooches which resembled a butterfly and the tail of a peacock. The others were a necklace which looked like a tail of a fox, a comb which looked like a bee, a bracklet which looked looked like a turtle's shell. The two in the middle were a pair of earrings which had the pattern of a ladybug's spots and finally a ring, black as night with a neon green paw which looked like it was made of emeralds. The two in the middle were a pair of earrings which had the pattern of a ladybug's spots and finally a ring, black as night with a neon green paw which looked like it was made of emeralds Izuku, that one is really cool. Points at the ring Marinette. I see you have good taste, that ring is a real beauty, however no one seems to want to buy it Marinette. I see you have good taste, that ring is a real beauty, however no one seems to want to buy it. Izuku, really why? Marinette. Who knows, but since you seem to like it so much, would you like to have it? Izuku, and no I couldn't it wouldn't be right. Marinette, I know but I know that you will need it much more than me. With that Izuku takes the ring and puts it on his finger feeling a weird feeling of energy flowing through him. Marinette, anyways I think it's best if we get you back to your mother. Izuku, yeah but how? Marinette points to a doorway plus Marinette. Take that door and continue the path. You'll find your mother fairly quickly Izuku. Thank you Mrs. Marinette for the help. Walks off Izuku POV. It has been about years since I met Mrs. Marinette and received the black cat ring which I had discovered had magical abilities and that is how I met Plague the God of Destruction who is also my now my sensei and teaches me how to keep my powers under control. Due to the first time I used my power, I scratched all off my kindergarten classmates' faces, leaving them with permanent scars. After that incident I became known as the first male with a quirk or power and every girl who had bullied me in. The past had just left me alone, but to be honest I think they keep away just because they are scared that I will ruin their pretty faces, not to mention I started to receive attention from the adults and female heroes and so I decided that I would use my powers for the greater good and become the first male hero. RD person's POV. Bakugu still hadn't returned due to her surgery. She was still away but the teachers sent her homework. Izuku was no longer being bullied anymore and he defended other boys who were being bullied since he stood up and showed people a side of him that needed to be under lock and key. Anyways Izuku has been training with Plague to move faster and hit harder as well as keeping his powers under control and unlocking new abilities. Not only that but Izuku could take a beating like literally. He got by the older girls who studied in the other school building and they tried to beat him up and show him his place. Key emphasis on the tried part though. Izuku learned that hitting his body in full speed was like running straight into a monster truck. Almost all the bullies in school found out the strong way. Not only that Izuku just had the best birthday ever. Plague's gift to Izuku was a set of headphones which had cat ears. Plague's gift to Izuku was a set of headphones which had cat ears. Just bread and the lights are neon green. He was really happy and woke up six seconds before his alarm went off. Izuka got up, ran into the bathroom, showered, brushed his teeth, put on his clothes, packed his bag and went to greet his mother, who had returned a day and a quarter months ago. She and Izuku greeted each other and ate katsudon while talking about where to go on school break. He then finished his meal and was putting on his shoes when his mom asked him, Izuki you know I could walk you to school, right? Inko just smiled at his response. Ever since he met Plague, he hanged for the better, he still stuttered but he was really responsible and helped her around the house more often than usual. She knew he would grow up to be a great hero, even greater than Almighty herself.
Izuka then said bye as he closed the door and walked towards his school with headphones on. They were playing at max so anyone near him could hear the lyrics. Izuku grunted as he collided with someone. I'm so sorry I wasn't low dash Izu, is that you? Izuku looked up to see a woman with blonde spiky hair. Auntie Mitsuki. You're back. Izuku shouted, while hugging her. Well look at you all grown up, you look like you're two years older than your messy black hair anywhere. Mitsuki said oh. Where's Inko? Did you lose her Izuku? Mitsuki questioned. No I'm a big boy now. He replied, well see ya auntie I've got to get to school. Bye. Mitsuki just started at Izuku as he weaved through the crowd. She wished her brat would be like that. But no she had to call Mitsuki an old hag. Ever since the brat got her quirk, people spoiled her, put her on a pedestal and made her think H was tough SHT. She also started picking on the weak. She only wished someone would help her daughter see the era of her ways. Mitsuki then went home. Meanwhile Izuku just got to school and was about to sit down when he felt really warm and was blown to the side of a wall. He didn't feel SHT. But he did feel all eyes were on him. Deku, the F you up to being happy. That makes me mad. You're worthless. You're trash, even more than these rejects, and the voice kept screaming more as Izuka got up and notices he had a hole in his shirt so, he just walked to the teacher and asked if he could have another one. Plague, goodness and here I though that Dasu was noisy. By the way people can't see Plague except for Izuku, Deku mind tell me about it. DKU. Stop ignoring me or you'll regret it, you corkless piece of trash. Katsumi yelled. Izuka just wondered how her vocal cords could take all this abuse. Katsumi then walked towards the boy and as she was passing his desk, the defenseless corkless nerd of a wimp she thought she knew was gone and he was replaced by what felt like anger. Katsumi then stopped as she saw Izuka's eyes suddenly started glowing neon green as the whites in his eyes became black and his pupils turned into cat pupils as he looked at her with a face of pure anger. Pure cinnamon roll style. Like this Katsumi's POV Katsumi's POV, WI is he looking at me like that, I thought. Deku looked, FFFF asterisk CKU looking at Dideru. Was all I could stutter. I had a feeling as all of my sins crawled on my back as he glared at me, not only that I wasn't the only one. Everyone else seemed to have the same feeling but they were crying from fear. I couldn't look weak so I held back the tears. Back off, was all he muttered but it hit me with a full blast. As I stepped back I saw that I was near his bag. The same yellow bag that looked way too big. But it was open so I could see something. It was a green and black headset with cat ears, so the nerd got a gift, must be important. All the fear left as her ego compelled her to blow up the bag. So she moved fast aiming her hand at the bag and proceeded to activate her quirk and pain she felt pain on her arm as someone else's hand had grabbed it and silver claws were piercing through her skin weight claws. As Katsumi looked down at her arm and saw that there were sharp silver claws coming from Izuku's nails. That was gripping her hand and drawing BLD and he looked like he was gonna commit genocide. I said back off Izuku snapped. I growled more or less as I sent an explosion straight to his face. But all I achieved was put some dust on his face and move his head back as he didn't even look dazed. I won't say it a third time Bakugu. If you don't I will retaliate. Izuku said. The nerd didn't even stutter, he was talking to me like he was an equal. Like he was better than me. That made me mad he was quirkless, like he was looking down on me. Worthless he was a pebble in my way and I was gonna show him his place. I was gonna attack when a reject came up to me and said, Bakugo maybe why you should leave high him all alone. Yo you don't want to end up all like the rest of us a month ago. I swung my head in his direction to tell him to F asterisk CK off when I saw his face it was an extra who me and Deku had been with in kindergarten who had a huge scar on his face. He was scared, no he was terrified. But not of me. No he meant Deku. What did Deku do that the whole class was afraid of him? So afraid they want her to back off. I felt the pain in my arm fade as Izuku left with his bag to the other side of class. I asked what the hell was going on. And they told me that in kindergarten he had gone really mad and scratched everyone's faces with his silver claws and about how he beat them all up over those headsets. Like if they broke he would too. They even told me how he faced all the older girls. How he just tackled them and they had broken bones, 
dislocated joints and internal bleeding and scars. But it was worse when they said that he seemed to have a hidden quirk that seemed to give him the powers of a black cat and how he was now known as the first male with a quirk. She didn't know what was going on but she was gonna find out what the F asterisk CK was going on. Izuku is now years old and still attends the same school. Still goes through with Katsumui and Izumi's bull asterisk it and yelling and her trying to do damage to him even though he told her that her explosions aren't hot enough to bruise him just powerful enough to send him flying. And or ripping his school uniform. Izuku would have gone bankrupt if the school didn't have an abundance of clothes in supply with his exact same size disturbing. And he always returned to see the girls and a few boys with nose bleeds. Izuku was just packing his bag, with his headsets around his neck. Fun fact months ago Izuku found that his headsets were near indestructible. Izumi threw it off the side off a cliff. Izuku was just finishing his mile run, he was wearing a white t-shirt with shorts, with his signature red Jordan shoes, which was also plot armor protected. He then sat down on the sand, music blasting his ears, the rising heat of the sun on his skin, with the cool wind blowing his face as his black hair whipped around him. Fun fact his hair had turned black about weeks after he snapped. After a few hours of sitting and shilling he looked at his watch and saw that it was about a clock in the afternoon and so decided to head home and decided to take a shortcut though a tunnel, when he reached the other side he saw a bunch of heroes standing in one spot in fighting petitions. Emmy lady, the street is too small, I would just cause destruction. Death arms. I can't use my quirk either BC I would just hurt those girls. Kamui Woods. I can't do anything either. Izuku was confused on what was going on and decided to climb on top of a building and saw Katsumi and another girl with white and red hair in the grasp of some sort of sludge villain and surrounded by a wall of fire. Izuki, please, save my friend. Fiyomi, please, save my little sister. Izuku jumped out of the building into an alleyway knowing exactly what to do. Izuku, let's just hope no one notices who I truly am. Yells Plague Claws Outs. At the same time the two girls were strudgling to break free. Katsumi, let me go, you piece of snot. Vicky, we are live at the incident where a sludge villain captured by Almighty has escaped and has two hostages. The heroes cannot currently do anything in fear of hurting innocent citizens or the two captured girls. What is that? In a blink of an eye neon green strings bursted into the sludge villain giving the two girls a chance to escape. The heroes were confused when all of a sudden everyone saw something they didn't think they would ever see. There in front of them stood a black figure seeming to take the appearance of a black cat not looking at anyone but the sludge villain the person seemed to be wearing a black Elcher bodysuit with Elcher ears and in some spots his suit was green with a black belt resembling a tail and a light blue bell with cat paws on it the person's eyes seemed to be glowing a toxic green. Vicky, looks like a mysterious person has appeared on the battlefield. But is this person a hero or a villain? Let's find out. Izuku's POV. As I enter the tunnel the slime attempts to attack me, but I acted fast and dodged with a flip and used my baton to swing off the wall. And kicked the villain in the eye. Sludge. Demon you brat those were my meat shields. After dodging another attack I went to a fire hydrant and kicked it with my foot breaking it in half. As water was in the air I spun my baton in a circle and used it to put out the firewall. I went back into the tunnel even though the pros were yelling at me to come back. Kamui Woods. Who is this kid? MD Lady. I don't know but he looks cute. Death Arms. Well he's gonna get hurt. We should step in Izuku. Don't. If he gets you he'll use your quirks to hurt innocent people. The pros were in shock to hear this so they stood back. Vicky. As we see this mysterious person is single-handedly taking on the sludge villain. Texas Smash. I saw Almighty came in and defeat the, the sludge villain and put her in a bottle. She then turned to me, Almighty, nice work kid. The people in the crowd cheered as the pros were approaching me so I grabbed a smoke grenade and said, Izuku, ninja vanish. I then turned into my cat form and ran into a nearby alleyway and stayed there until I was sure the cost was clear then I turned out of my cat form and said, Izuku, claws in. I then de-transformed and went home. 
It was the next day after what became known as the sludge villain incident which was all over the news and everyone in school was talking about the mysterious black cat who had saved Katsumi and later Izuku found out the other girl was Shoka Todoroki who was the NR Hero Endeavor's daughter. The day went as normal for Izuku. Time skipped to lunchtime. Izuku was just sitting under a tree listening to music and eating his cup noodles with chicken and bacon bites. When he heard someone yelling his name, Izuku removed his headphones to see a boy in his class running towards him, though when he got closer he slowed down and stopped a few feet away just to make sure that Izuku didn't attack him BC by now he had a reputation at school for attacking anyone who dared to challenge, bully, talk bad or try to break his headphones. Izuku, you gonna tell me why you were looking for me, or are you just gonna stand there and stare at me? Random boy. WWL the PP Pro Hero Eraser Head and PP Principal Nezi are here to recruit students to UA and they heard AA BB about why your reputation FF from the other schools and asked me to BB bring you to the principal's office so they could TT talk to you. Izuku was surprised that the underground hero and the principal of UA had heard about his reputation and was even more surprised that they actually want to talk to him. Izuku, okay. Give me a sec. After Izuku got ready, he let the random boy lead him to the principal's office where Eraserhead and Nezi were already waiting for him. Nezi, so you must be Izuku Midoriya, I have heard a lot about you. Izuku, thank you, but I'm guessing you heard about me through the other schoolgirls who I have fought. Nezi, that is true and I must admit I was not expecting you to be able to beat up a bunch of girls who have powerful quirks, moreover a boy who surprisingly took down the sludge villain with ease or what you say about it. Black Cat. Everyone in the room including Izumi and Katsumi who were eavesdropping were in shock. Well except Izuku and Eraser. Izuku. Well I'm not that surprised that you figured out my secret, with you being the smartest being in Japan, if not in the world. Although I am curious on how you found out about my alter ego. Nezi. Well if you are that curious then I might as well tell you, you see it happened a few weeks ago when we were first looking for students to attend UA. Flashback a few weeks before. Nezi and Eraser were at a school a few hours away from Izuku's school. Eraser, remind me again why you brought me along. Nezi, because you have a sane eye for those who have potential for the hero course. As they are walking past a corner they overhear a bunch of girls talking in corner. Girl, how on earth did you let that stupid boy beat you? Girl, oh shut up. He was much stronger than us with that black cat quirk of his. Girl, you and besides you weren't there so you don't know anything. Girl, literally. You weren't even there so you have no say in this. The two had heard the conversation and the conversation immediately caught their interest. Nezi, excuse me ladies for butting in but me and Eraser heard your little talk and were wondering what you were talking about. Girl, ugh. <laughs> Sorry ma'am why see WW weeks ago me and the girls heard a rumor that a boy at Aldra Junior High had received a quirk slash power and is so WWE went to check it out and FFF found the boy beating one of our CCC classmates in a fight and so we CCC challenged him to a fight to put HHM in HH's place BBB but instead we were the ones who got beat up. SS so FF far no one has been able to beat him and who had dared to challenge him were sent to the hospital and had broken bones, dislocated joints and internal bleeding. Girl, not to mention, whoever dared to bully any other boys near him were left with bad scars like the one he left on my sister. Points to the scar on her sister's left eye Aizawa. Oof. That is a bad scar. Random girl, everyone, come quick Jackson has challenged the black cat to a fight. Meh. By the way that is the nickname people have given Izuku, Aizawa, black cat. Girl, TT that's the nickname that people HH have G given him. They walked to the back of the school to see the students gathered around in a circle surrounding two people. One was a girl with short blonde hair and brown eyes who had an angry expression on her face the other was a boy with raven black hair except for his neon green hair streak, emerald green eyes who had a look of annoyance on his face. Random girl. Welcome boys and girls to the Black Cat vs. Jackson showdown. On the left corner we have our school's very own Lazuli Jackson, weird name I know, don't come at me. The one who no one in our school has managed to beat so far. Will she keep that title or will her reign end in this very moment? The crowd of students cheered. And in the left corner we have the one and only, the first male to have a quirk slash power, the Black Cat. 
the one who has been climbing the ranks and beating the S asterisk T out of everyone who has dared challenge him, will he prove everyone wrong that males can be heroes and take the throne of fighters? Let's find out tonight. The crowd goes wild. Random girl. Fighters, are you ready? Jackson, bring it on you cat freak. Izuku, whatever, let's just get this over with. They get into fighting posits ions and get ready to fight and so the fight began and right off the bat Izuku was beating Jackson's a asterisk asterisk, showing no mercy while dodging her attacks with ease and finishing the fight fairly quickly and knocking Jackson unconscious. They get into fighting posits ions and get ready to fight and so the fight began and right off the bat Izuku was beating Jackson's a asterisk asterisk, showing no mercy while dodging her attacks with ease and finishing the fight fairly quickly and knocking Jackson random girl and Jackson has been defeated. Black Cat is put an end to Jackson's reign and taken the crown of fighters. The crowd went ballistics but the Black Cat was just annoyed and just left. Back to the present Nezi, and here we are now. Izuku, Ichinich that explains everything. But that brings me to my next question. Why did you want to talk to me about? Aizawa. Well we also figured out you were the one who has been sending us info on the villain organizations who have been trying to rise up. Izuku, that I did do. But what does that have to do with you wanting to talk to me? Nezi, well you are an excellent fighter, you are very intelligent, sneaky and are always aware of things around you and have a great power in you hands. Which makes you a very big enemy to any sort of villain and we have been looking for a way to get men back into their rightful place in society and so we would like to ask you to join UA's hero program. To say Izuku was surprised was an understatement in fact he was Shuk and so were the two tormentors behind the door. Izuku, I would be honored to join Yue. Nezi, glad to hear it. The entrance exam starts in a few months, see you there. Izuku woke up and saw that today was the entrance exam. He changed into his workout clothes and put on a simple gray jacket. Izuku, hmm, I think I will take my motorcycle so I won't have to deal with Izumi and Katsumi's bowl asterisk T. Izuku had a small breakfast said goodbye to his to his mom and went to his bike. Just pretend it's neon green. He rode to Yue's lot and went to see this he rode to Yue's lot and went to see this. He was knocked out of his thoughts by a certain angry Pomeranian he was knocked out of his thoughts by a certain angry Pomeranian. Katsumi, get out of my way you extras. And so Izuku side stepped to get out of her way. He continued walking and all Izuku could see were the various girls looking at him and giggling to themselves. Some comments were that he was hot or that, is that who I think it is, kind of thing. Izuku saw a girl trip and about to fall. He rushed in and caught her. Izuku, careful, wouldn't want you to get bad luck for tripping on the exam. Izuku took the time to take in her looks to see she had brown bob cut hair and permanent blush. Achiko, thank you, I'm Achiko Uraraka. Izuku, Izuku Midoriya but you can call me Deku. Well we better get going or else we'll be late. They walk in and Izuku sits the farthest seat away from Katsumi and Izumi. Hello ladies. They see it is present Mike they see it is present Mike Mike. It is great to see you here. Let's get started shall we? She explained about the exam and how they will gain villain points from destroying three different pointed robots. During this, Izuku had his hood up and was mumbling about what his plans were as messing with his ring. Excuse me. Can you tell me what the meaning of the fourth robot is? This is quite unprofessional as teachers of UA. And you, girl with her hood up, will you stop your mumbling and will you stop your ring from glowing? Also take off your hood. These things are not welcome as a hero. Izuku stands up. Listen Miz, if you had simply let present Mike finish she could have told you that the fourth robot is a zero pointer AK the one robot that must be avoided. It is also stated on the paper. As for me, takes his hood off, I am a boy and the mumbling is something of a habit I have. I was also trying to plan ahead on what I was gonna do for the exam. As for my ring, it is something I can't turn off. If you are gonna jump to conclusions like this then you should think before you speak because it can cause more harm to you, your allies, and to the civilians that you are saving. Izuku took his seat as well as the glasses girl. We now see Izuku in front of the big entrance into the fake city. As he stretches, he saw Achiko who seemed to be really nervous. But before he could talk to her he sensed the same glasses girl who was about to say something but Izuku cut her off. Izuku, 
Don't even think about it little Ms. Perfect. If you hadn't noticed the girl with brown hair has a face of nervousness on her face and I was simply gonna comfort her so don't even think about about stopping me. As Izuku said that the girl could feel the venom in the boy's voice so she backed up. Izuku, hey, Achiko. Uraraka looked at Izuku and her mind seemed to be at ease when the boy approached. Izuku, look, I know you are nervous, I am too but whatever happens I know you will pass and you will do good, you just need to believe in yourself. At that point the doors opened and Izuku wasted no time and ran towards the city starting to destroy robots. Why did that boy run and they haven't said go yet? Present Mike, what are you doing? There is no signal when in a real emergency, follow the black-haired hottie. Izuku was still smashing robots. He touched his ring and turned into a panther and roared at the robots ripping them into shreds. He heard a cry for help to see a small purple-haired girl that was trapped by some robots. He came in and shredded them to bits and pieces. Izuku, hey, it's okay now, see ya? He runs off, unknown to him sprouting some perverted thoughts in her head. I wonder how good he would be in the bed. Aizu felt a shiver and wondered why he felt that as he was in his cheetah form. He shook it off and continued destroying the bots. In the control room, we see the principal Nezi, Eraserhead, Almighty and a few other heroes. Nezi, it looks like we have a lot of great participants. Almighty, yeah female Cementus, hmm, isn't that the boy from before? Midnight, yeah, wait a minute, doesn't he look a little familiar to you guys? Female Hound Dog, wait a DMN minute, that's the kid from the Sludge Villain incident. They see Izuka having transformed into a black tiger with neon green stripes tearing at the bots all while helping other participants. Almighty, he seems to have handled himself well. Eraser, we'll just have to see how he deals with the true aspects of the exam. Same with the others. Nezi pushed a red button. Back to the exam, Deku has to take a breath and let Plague rest. He felt the rubble move and saw the zero pointer. Everyone was running away. Izuku was gonna leave when he heard a cry for help and he turned to see Achiko stuck in some rubble. He wasted no time and ran towards her yelling, Plague, claws out. In a blink of an eye he was in his hero suit not stopping and running towards Achiko Izuku yelled. Cataclysm! A black ball formed in his hand and he touched the rocks turning them into dust and picking Achiko up bridal style and bringing her to a safe spot. Izuku, you stay here. Achiko, wait, Dekaku and no. As Izuku was running towards the robot he heard some of the people saying, Wait, what is that guy doing? He knows that robot is not worth any points. Glasses girl. Wait, he saved that girl, there were supposed to be hidden points in the exam. I transformed into my jungle cat form to climb to the top of its head and also use my claws to keep my balance. Once I got on top of its head and used a move that was a bit risky however I was not gonna let my friend get hurt. Izuku, ultimate destruction. As Izuku touched the robot's head and the robot slowly started to crack and the robot turned into dust within seconds. The boy landed on the ground while doing flips and somersaults and finally landing a perfect landing. Present Mike, time is up. Teacher's box. Nezi was clapping while the other heroes were staring in shock. Female ectoplasm. Man that kid is something else. Midnight, I must say I'm impressed. Almighty, he did an excellent job saving that girl. Aizawa, looks like he's accepted to go to UA. Izuku was laying there exhausted, he simply managed to mutter out CC Claw's eye in and de-transformed, he was simply sitting there and until he felt a wet embrace on his cheek and saw Recovery Girl standing next to him and holding out a small lollipop. Recovery Girl, go ahead young man, take it into your mouth, it will restore your strength. Having no strength to fight back, Izuku took the lollipop into his mouth and mummered. Izuku, Jay just help Achiko, she has a twisted ankle. Recovery girl, do not worry young man I will tend to her shortly, you just sit here for now and gather your strength. Weeks later Izuku was just simply enjoying some katsudon while getting death glares from Izumi when their mother burst in yelling, Izumi, either here, and shoved two letters in their faces and left. Izuku and Izumi just stared at their letters, willing themselves to open them. So they ripped them in half. Two metal discs came out and showed them holograms of holograms of Almighty was yelling, I am Hiri in a hologram. Young Midoriyas you were both simply amazing. 
You, Mr. Midoriya, were the only one who rushed in without hesitation. You have a total of points. I bet you're asking yourself what I only had villain points. You see, young Midoriya, what kind of hero school would we be if we didn't consider those who went out of their way to help others? You certainly did, young Midoriya, with all the other examinees you helped, especially that time when we released the pointer. You risked killing yourself just to save someone else. The true qualities of a hero are shown in time of crisis. So, young Midoriya, welcome to your hero academia. You also did well at the exam, young Izumi. She then showed her hand as the screens went black. Izuku just stood there, in tears of joy, he made it. He made it. He felt his mom come in and hug him as he felt Plague hugging him, you made it little kitten. There was no doubt. Plague smiled as Mama Midoriya just wept with her little boy while Izumi felt an empty feeling of jealousy filled her heart. ST day of UA, Izuku. You have your hankies right? His mother asked him. Izuku said, yes mom. And as he opened the door he looked back at his mom and said, don't worry mom I'll be fine. With that he left his smiling mother and walked to UA. Still listening to his music. He was searching UA High's RD floor, looking for A when he bumped into a blonde girl. Ugh. I'm really sorry I wasn't looking where I was going. Ignore the male kendo in the picture. Ignore the male kendo in the picture, Mona. Nah. It's okay, everyone makes mistakes. Oh wait you're that boy who got rescue points along with villain points aren't you? Izuku. Yeah that's me. Izuku Midoriya. Izuku held his hand out for a handshake which Mona Nito, female Monoma, accepted, they started talking about Harrow's and how their tests went and as they stopped by, B. Izuku asked where A was. Mona said, up ahead. There was no hate in her eyes or voice. But he believed Midoriya earned it. He saw how humble Midoriya was, who wasn't gloating, which was the type of person Mona wished to be friends with. But she was still gonna give class a strong time. He opened the door to see it was Katsumi and the glasses girl with engines and that they were arguing. Take your feet of the desk. It's highly unwelcoming for a hero at UA. Katsumi, th calm down ya foo asterisk. Tina, such harsh words. I think we got on the wrong foot. P My name is Tina and I am semi-private school. Katsumi, so you're from a private school big whoopee foo asterisk ing do. I don't care where you're from. Annoy me again and I'll kill you. Tina, you'll kill me. How unheard of a hero. Izuku walks over to Katsumi's desk and slams hand on her desk, I would advise you to shut up Katsumi before I scratch your eyeballs out. Oh my godness, it's that boy from the news. Deka looks to see a pink alien girl with a red head with sharp teeth walk up to them. Mina, hi. Name's Mina Ishido and this Eva Kirishima. We got to say that was awesome with your transformations and how you took that villain down. Izuku, ha huh, I see. Tina, oh, right you're the one from my section of the exam and I have to apologize for how I reacted to you. Izuku, it's fine. Tina, also you were able to see something else in the exam, so you were more superior than me. Izuku, actually, I didn't know about the rescue points. I just saw someone in trouble and went to and went to save them nothing else nothing more. Tina, I see. Izuku, we should get to our seats, the teacher is here. Izuka dashed to the seat nearest to the window, which was one seat behind Katsumi, but Izuku was right as he saw the caterpillar roll in, only for a woman dressed in black with a scarf around her neck come out whilst drinking some sort of juice. Shoya, only one of you noticed my arrival and it took you seans to follow him Shoya. Only one of you noticed my arrival and it took you seans to follow him. My name is Shoya Izawa your homeroom teacher and this is the hero Kurus. Everyone, what is up with her? Shoya, it's not much but here are some gym clothes. Change into them and meet me outside. Everyone changes and meets everyone outside. Shoya, okay. You will be doing a quirk test. Achiko, what about orientation? Shoya, we don't have all the time in the world for that stuff. Bakugo, what was your score at your school with no quirk? Katsumi, like meters or whatever. Shoya tosses a ball to her. Shoya, throw this with your quirk. Katsumi goes up to the circle and uses her quirk. Katsumi, die. Everyone except Izuku, die. Izuku, sai same old Bakugo Shoya. Know your limits the score said meters everyone. Wow, what a score. We get to use our quirks. 
Cool, this will be fun. Izuku thought. Shoya, fun. Fine then, last score is expelled. Everyone, what? Achiko, you can't do that, it's not fair. Shoya was about to speak when Izuku spoke. Izuku, fair. Life isn't fair here. Not everything goes your way as a hero or civilian. There will always be trouble and danger that come out of nowhere. Before I got my power, I was bullied for being a male who wanted to be a hero so don't tell me what's fair in life. Please continue Aizawa sensei. Everyone was stunned for a moment. Shoya, couldn't have said it better myself Midoriya, anyway let's begin. Test, meet her run Tina with Frog Girl. Tina took off and got CC while Frog got section. Achiko went off with a tailed girl. Achiko got AC while tail got seconds. A girl with sparkles around her went off by shooting her naval laser got seconds but was beaten by Mina who was faster Shoya. Bakugo and Midoriya next. Katsumi, get ready to eat dirt Deku. Izuku, will see she transformed to a cheetah. Katsumi thoughts, we'll this will SCK. Shoya go. They go, Katsumi got seconds but got beaten by a cheetah's speed of seconds. Everyone, whoa. Grip strength, a girl with three sets of arms and a mask went and got KG Mina. Wow. You must be as a gorilla. Purple grape hair girl. Octopuses are SE asterisk Y crunch. They turned to see Midoriya with a broken grip strength tester. Izukups. Mina, well he seemed stronger standing long jump, Izuku used a cougar to jump up and got higher than most. I know that those animals can't do that, this is just an ew so don't come at me. Repeated sidesteps, let's just say the purple grape-haired girl and Izuku in his cheetah form were tied since the girl used her quirk to bounce off of them while Izuku just moved fast. Sit-ups, Izuku was able to do them netter in his human form and due to his new high stamina he was able to keep going. Push-ups, same result seated toe touch he was flexible enough to be close to Mina. Distance run, let's just say that Izuku in high cheetah and Tina were neck and neck at one point before she too had tuckered out. Ball throw, Achiko went up and got Infinity Shoya. Midoriya, your next Izuku went up and was about to touch the ring when he sensed a danger and transformed into a normal black cat and dodged the scarf. Shoya, why are you still holding back? You've been using at least only three forms. Izuku, well I do have a lot of forms and it's better not to give all your tricks away, can I erase her head? Shoya, mm, smart and you know my hero name. Show me that you have the drive to be here. Be creative. Izuku, hey, you, girl with the ice and fire quirk, can you make me an ice wall, please? Fire and ice girl. <laughs> the girl made an ice wall and Izuku threw the ball, however, he was not done. He shot the ball with a destruction string and a catalyasm, but he was still not done. Izuku transformed into a lion and sent out a loud roar. He then raises his arm with a green glow around his hand and pushed the ball further until it was out of sight. He transforms back to Izuku. Izuku, breathe how was that for creative, sensei? Shoya looks to see that the score was KMS far. Everyone, whoa. Shoya, not bad results Shoya. Okay here's the scores. They saw that Izuku was first, Katsumi second, someone named Shoka Todoroki in third, Momo in fourth, Kyoka in seventh and last being a Mira Mineta. Mirsu, now I'll ever be able to see the cute hunk. Everyone sweat drop Shoya. Relax, no one being expelled. This was a test to push you to your limits. Everyone was happy. Shoya, okay, change and head back into class. Izuku, but don't let your guard down, she expelled an entire class last year BC they didn't excite her expectations. With that everybody's sweat dropped thanking God that they didn't get expelled. In the dressing rooms, the girls were changing when Mira called out to them. Mira? Hey look, a hole in the wall and it leads to the black cat hunk of a man Tina. Mineta, we must not do this stuff. Momo, yes she's right. Mira, come on it's fine, besides he could do the same to us. The girls blush thinking about this. Izumi, PSH yeah, right Izuku wouldn't do that he is way too denke. Mina, Izuku eh, is he your boyfriend? Mina said in a teasing way Izumi. W, why on earth would I have a thing for my own brother? Everyone except Izuku, brother. Kyoka, so that's why you always walk to school together. Mira, I'm still looking gak mama like. She saw Izuku look like this Mira. I wonder how good he is in the bed. Mira, I wonder how good he is in the bed. 
she gets slapped by a tongue and I poked by a ear jacks. Kyoka, that's enough. I boys, Izuku couldn't help but blush when hearing the girls since his senses are a bit higher. Back in class, Shoya. Alright, introduce each other. I'm going to sleep so wake me when you're done. Mina. Okay, my name is Mina Ashido and I can shoot acid from my hands. Eva. Name's Eva Kirishima and my quirk is hardening where I can harden my body. Eva. Name's Eva Kirishima and my quirk is hardening where I can harden my body mezzi. Name's Mezi Shoji and I can use my duplicated arms to create eye, mouths and ears. Kin, on erase board my anmi is Kin Koda and I can talk to animals and tell them what to do Kin. On erase board my anmi is Kin Koda and I can talk to animals and tell them what to do. Kin, on erase board my anmi is Kin Koda and I can talk to animals and tell them what to do Rina. Name's Rina Sato and I can eat sugar to enhance my strength. Mashi. My name is Mashi Ojiro and I just have this tale but I know martial arts to help me Mashi. My name is Mashi Ojiro and I just have this tale but I know martial arts to help me. Mashi. My name is Mashi Ojiro and I just have this tale but I know martial arts to help me Yuna. Yuna Aoyama and I can fire a naval laser from my belly button. Yuna. Yuna Aoyama and I can fire a naval laser from my belly button Dina. Name's Dina Kaminari and I can fire lightning. Dina. Name's Dina Kaminari and I can fire lightning Hana. Hana Siro and I can shoot tape from my arms. Toru. Toru Hagikure and I'm pretty much invisible Toru. Toru Hagikure and I'm pretty much invisible. Izuku. Really? BC I can see visible. <laughs> Please tell me what I look like. Kyoka. After this introduction, if he starts he will go into him mumble storm. Anyway, name's Kyoka Jiro and I have these earphone jacks and I can hear with him. Fumi, Fumi Tokoyami and I can summon my friend and partner, Dark Shadow. Dark Shadow, Yo Tsuyu, Tsuyu Azui and I pretty much can do anything a frog can do Tsuyu. Tsuyu Azui and I pretty much can do anything a frog can do. Mira, Mira Mineta and I can take these great ball off my hair and I can have them to stick to anything but I can bounce of them. I'm also a pervert and can't wait to check out some hot guys. I'm also... A pervert and can't wait to check out some hot guys Izuku shivers. Momo. Momo Yayorozu and I can create anything with the lipids of my body. Tina. Tina Ida and I have these engines on my legs to run fast. Achiko. Achiko Yurarika and I can touch anything with my five fingers and take the gravity off it, but using it too long causes me to be nauseous Achiko. Achiko Yurarika and I can touch anything with my five fingers and take the gravity off it, but using it too long causes me to be nauseous. Shoka. Shoka Todoroki and I can use half hot half cold I mostly use my ice. Katsumi. Names Katsumi Bakugo and I can fire explosions from the sweat on my hands Katsumi. Names Katsumi Bakugo and I can fire explosions from the sweat on my hands. Izumi. Izumi Midoriya and I have a telekinesis quirk which allows me to levitate things with my mind Izumi. Izumi Midoriya and I have a telekinesis quirk which allows me to levitate things with my mind. Just pretend her as Izuku but a female. They all turn to Izuku but see him in a notebook and was mumbling. Katsumi, oi, deki your turn. Izuka asterisk ignores asterisk ajui, Midoriya-chan. Izuka asterisk m, asterisk ajui. It's your turn to introduce yourself Izuku. Oh, sorry. Clear's throat my name is Izuku Midoriya but like to be called Deku. As you can tell I'm a male and I have the black cat ring which grants me the power of destruction and the abilities of a feline. Toru, that's cool and all but could you tell me how you can see me? And what do I look like? Izuku, oh right, well since this is bonded to me it has enhanced my normal human body to be faster, stronger and smarter than most. It also enhanced my senses and so I can see invisible things. As for what you look like, here's a hologram of you. Toru. I look so pretty. Thanks I always wanted to know what I look like Toru. I look so pretty. Thanks I always wanted to know what I look like. Izuku, no problem. Siro, also what were you doing with your notebook? Izuku, yeah. I was analyzing your quirks when we were outside and I was writing down more information from our introduction. The mumbling is a habit I have. Shoya, okay, that's all, you can leave. <laughs> Midoriya, wait for a second. I need to talk to you in private. Azui, see you tomorrow Midoriya-san. Shoya, 
Nezi told me to tell you that she would like you to look into the Yakuza group. Izuku. Yes, ma'am. I should have the info by the end of the month. Shoya. Thank you Midoriya, you may leave. The next day I rode my motorcycle to school again using my pass except this time other students saw me and watch in awe as I walk past them to my class. The day went pretty normal well except for present Mike trying to entertain us in English. It now for our heroic lesson and you never guess who's our teacher. Almighty, I am here coming through the door like a hero. They see it to be almighty walking through the door. They see it to be almighty walking through the door Dina. I can't believe it, it's really almighty. Eva, so she is a teacher. Tsuyu, hey look, she is wearing her Silver Age costume. Almighty, hello. I will be your heroics teacher and for today's lesson we will be doing battle training. Katsumi, battle is a training am, and what better way as heroes as then to wear our hero costumes. She clicks a button on the front desk that reveals suitcases of their hero suitcases of their hero suits. AM, go ahead and change and we will meet at Gamma B. The class gets up and changes into their hero suits. We see them come out. AM, you gals all are looking good AM, you gals all are looking good. Achiko, wait, Dekakuen, why aren't you in your costume? Izuku, oops, give me a sec clears thoat plaid claws out. The girls had to cover their eyes BC of a green light that nearly blinded them. When they look back at Midoriya they see him wearing this dash. Again, ignore Todoroki in the picture, also the bell is light blue with cat paws on it. Achiko, well, you look cool Dekakuen. I wished I was more detailed, since mine is a skin-tight suit. Izuku, eh, it's fine, you can always change it later Kyoka comes over. I must say Midoriya, this is one sick hero costume. Izuku, thank you Jiro-san and please call me Izuku. Almighty, enough talk. Now, here is the objective, you will be in pairs one team will be heroes, the other team will be villains. The villain team must protect the bomb from the heroes and if the heroes touch the bomb they'll win. Now let's get you in teams. Tina, how will we be grouped? Almighty, by pulling slots. Tina, why ma'am that doesn't seem logical. Izuku, seriously, are you an idiot or what? Tina, Midoriya. Izuku, the reason she is doing this will help us in the future. Let's just say that you are teamed up with someone you barely know, that you have to work with them without knowing anything about their quirk or experience. So this will help us learn how to adapt. Tina, I see, apologies for interrupting Almighty Sensei. Almighty, that is all right young Ida. Now let's begin with the lesson. Izuku and Kyoka are in the same team they are the heroes and the villains are Izumi and Katsumi. AM, alright, team A are the heroes while team D are the villains. Izuku, guess, we are a team Kyoka-san. Kyoka, guess so. AM, alright Katsumi and Izumi, go hide the bomb. Hero team get your plan into action. Kyoka, you ready Midoriya? Izuku, Sai Kyoka, you okay Midoriya? Izuku, Listen Kyoka, I don't want you to get hurt, but knowing Bakugo she's gonna go after me. So I think it's best if you go looking for the bomb and I deal with Bakugo. Kyoka, alright. Gives a thumbs up AM, hero team can enter. As they enter Izuku hears Bakugo's footsteps and gives Kyoka the signal to hide. They both hide behind a pillar and wait for a bit to make sure she didn't hear them. Izuku whispers, alright, you go looking for the bomb, I deal with her. Kyoka whisper, you got it. Izuku whisper, wait. Izuku opens a secret compartment in his baton and takes out two earring communicators and gives one to Kyoka. Izuku whisper, let me know when you find the bomb through this. Kyoka puts that earring communicator in her ear and gives Izuku a thumbs up. As Kyoka sneaks away Izuku steps out of hiding. Bakugo tried to sneak attack him but he blocked the blow with my hands. Kyoka talks into the earring communicator. Midoriya, you okay? The smoke cleared to see that he was unharmed. Katsumi. How were you able to resist that? Izuku. My suit is bullet, knife, expulsion, and elemental proof so your quirk won't affect it. Izuku talks into the earring communicator. Kyoka. Go get the bomb I'll handle Bakugo. Kyoka into the communicator. You got it. In the observation room Eli. Wow. Midoriya took that blow from Bakugo. Achiko, for a male with no powers I'm impressed how much power he took. Aoyama, 
It seems that MDM Kyoka has found the bomb. Back to the battle. As Bakugo charged at me I pull out my baton and jump over her and hit her at her ribs. She turned around to kick me but I bock it and activate taser mode at my baton and got her at her chest. Katsumi, F's observation room Dina. Did he just shock Bakugo? Rina, what kind of weapon does he have? Back at the battle after Bakugo was shocked it gave me time to escape and blend in the shadows and tried to communicate to Kyoka. Izuku, hey, Kyoka what's the situation, did you find the bomb? Kyoka, yeah, it's on the fifth floor but Izumi is protecting it. Izuku, okay, I can leave Bakugo here. Just then I heard a noise behind seeing it was Bakugo. Katsumi, very stealthy Deku but now I'm charged. Izuku, what are you talking? About Katsumi, well, you see these gauntlets aren't just for show. My quirk lets me a nitroglycerin type sweat which fills up the power of the gauntlets to make a bigger explosion. All I need to do is to pull this trigger so Deku, you scared now. Observation room Eli. Almighty, Bakugo has gone crazy. Mina, she's gonna hurt Izuku. Back at the battle Almighty, Bakugo. You'll kill him. Katsumi, he'll be fine as long as he dodges. I put my baton back on my hip and stood there. Izuku, take your best shot. She pulled the trigger and the explosion came at me but that was part of the plan I activated my tech on my hand uppercut the explosion to where Izumi and Kyoka were. Izuku, Kyoka, hold on to something. Kyoka, right? After the explosion there was a hole in the ceiling I used my baton to go up, made it to the next floor and used a net to trap Izumi. I saw Bakugo flying towards us and was about to use an explosion. Izuku, Kyoka, touch the weapon. Kyoka, okay. Before she could touch it Bakugo hit me with me with a massive explosion, after that Almighty said. Almighty, the hero team wins. Kyoka, all right we did it. Izuku. As she looked behind her, she saw a black cat stretching and rolling on the floor with an unconscious Katsumi beside the cat. Kyoka rolls eyes. You silly kitty. As the cat heard that it transformed back into the black-haired boy and picked Katsumi up and brought her to Recovery Girl's office to get her healed. Recovery Girl's office RG. HM, I see you are mostly unharmed. But you did still get a few scratches and sprained your wrist, just let it rest for a week and it will heal nicely, you may head back to class. Izuku, thank you, Recovery Girl for the help. RG, you're welcome young man and have a nice day. I walk back to class eh? and as I open the door everyone came running to me. Eli, Midoriya. You're back. Hannah, I can't believe you held your own against Bakugu she's super strong. Mina, your dodging skills were amazing. Momo, but you should take more care of yourself. Izuku, I know ya Momo but I'm fine, really. I only got a couple of scratches and a sprained wrist which will heal quickly. Mashi, I'm just glad that you are not seriously injured. Izuku, yeah, me too anyway we should get going before Aizawa sensei gets mad. With that they continued their day as normal and left by the end of the day wondering what tomorrow will bring. Elsewhere. Shigaraki are you ready? Shigaraki, yes. Izuku's POV. After I finish eating my breakfast I brush my teeth and grab the keys to my motorcycle. When I'm halfway to UA I spot Yurosu walking on the sidewalk. Izuku, hey ya Momo. Momoto. Izuku, what a surprise to see you here. Izuku, want me to drive you to school? Momo, sure. That would be very much appreciated. She hopped on the back of my motorcycle and I gave her a spare helmet BC you go to stay safe while driving. Once we arrive we saw a bunch of reporters in front of the school blocking the entrance. Momo, why are there so many reporters? Izuku, they must have found out that Almighty is working here now, but I know a way to get inside. Momo. And what kind of ides would that be? I press a button on me keys and my motorcycle changed into its second mode. I press a button on me keys and my motorcycle changed into its second mode. Meh. Just pretend that it has neon green cat paws on it. Momo, since when did your motorcycle do this? Izuku, it's a secret mode I had installed for any emergencies. We avoid the reporters and I drove straight at the wall but instead of crashing I pressed a button on the handle and one of the guns shot out a light blue ball of light that hit the wall creating a portal to the other side of the wall. Once we were on the other side of the wall and drove to the parking area as my motorcycle turned back to normal. Momo, 
your motorcycle could really help out at hero work. Izuku, I know, but we should get inside before Aizawa sensei gets mad. As we went into class and sat down Mrs. Aizawa was discussing about our combat training. Aizawa, I have to say most of you did an excellent job, but there are some flaws. Bakugo you need to control your temper, Todoroki you can't just freeze the entire building, you have to be careful with your partner and Mineta stop being a pervert. Mostly out of all of you, the one who impressed me the most was Midoriya. I was surprised. I mean the others had powerful quirks that made them stick out and I was wondering how did I impress Mrs. Aizawa in combat training. Aizawa, you did some good planning and thinking ahead of your opponent. Izuku, thank you sensei. Aizawa, anyway today's task will decide the fate of your future. Class, thoughts, except for Izuku, is it another quirk test? Aizawa, you'll all need to pick a class representative. Class de thoughts, except for Izuku, oh. Just normal school stuff. As everyone was raising their hand wanting to be class rep, but you're probably thinking why we'll in a normal class a class rep is just some extra work. But in UA, it's a way to show how you can lead a team and get the attention by heroes. Tina, everyone quiet. We shall do this with our election. Class of thoughts. It's obvious you want us to vote for you. Anyway, we decided by voting as everyone was putting their votes and I was voting for my friend Momo since she could handle something like this. But I also wanted to be class rep but I thought no one would vote for me since I'm a male, well Achiko, yes, but the others no. As votes were in I saw that I had votes and Momo had Izuku's mind. Wait, I got more votes. Katsumi, okay, you idiots who voted for him. Hannah, what, did you seriously think people were gonna vote for you? Katsumi, the F asterisk CK you say. Aizawa, anyway. The class rep is Midoriya and our deputy is Yayorozu. Izuku, I don't know how I got this position, but I'll do my best to be the best class rep after the vote it was time for lunch. I was sitting with a group of Achiko, Tina, Shoka, Tsuyu, Tokoyami, Ojiro, Momo and Kyoka. Izuku, so why did you guys vote me? Achiko, well the way you acted in combat training we thought you can actually lead a team. Kyoka, yeah when I saw you were telling me to go. It was an exact same way a leader would do. Ojiro, who know, maybe after we graduate we can form teams of our own. Izuku, yeah, though Tina, the engines on your legs and your costume you don't happen to be the sister oh the pro hero ingenium. Tina, well it's actually true, she is my sister, also how did you figure that out? Izuku, well the way you move and how you look similar to him, I simply put the pieces together. Tina, wow. I didn't know you were good at solving that. Yuna. Actually, Monami, the class has started calling Midoriya the world's greets detective. For example, he helped me figure out that my naval laser works on body fat just like MDM Yayurozu over here. That is not canon, I just made it up, so don't come at me. Tina. Really? Ojiro. That's true, I was having trouble finding other martial arts moves to add to my skill set and Midoriya helped me out a lot with that. Before we discuss anything else the alarm went off and other students in the cafeteria panicked. I saw someone accidentally hit Kyoka so I got close to protect her. Eli, what in the world is going on? Shoka, I don't know. Izuku, I have an idea. I activate my super cat eyesight and scan the area to see that the reporters from outside have entered the building Izuku. Momo, I need a microphone. Kyoka I need you to connect the microphone to the school cafeteria speaker. Momo, okay. Kyoka, got it. After Momo created the microphone, I transformed into my cat form and ran to the nearest cafeteria microphone and Kyoka set it up. Izuku, everyone stop. Idiots, there is no villain attack. The reporters have broken into the building so stop panicking, you hurting others around you. I'm sure the teachers will handle this situation, so please stop panicking and calm down. As everyone saw what was actually going on outside the situation calmed down and everyone went about their business like before. Kyoka, nice work Midoriya. Tina, I guess it was a good choice that we chose you as class rep as I got back down I and told my friends we should get back to class. As we waited for everyone to enter there was something on my mind. How did the reporters enter the building? Aizawa came in and told what a good job I did. Aizawa. Anyway class is dismissed hope you're ready for tomorrow cause we will be doing the next step of being heroes. As she got in her sleeping bag I was the first to leave to go check out where the reporters broke in. 
but no explosion, so someone was here before the reporters must have been a villain he or she must have used their quirk I should inform Principal Nezi about this. As I walk I bumped into someone Izuku, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. That's alright but what are you doing here? I saw that it was midnight, and I was super embarrassed midnight. Aren't you Izuku Midoriya the first male with a quirk slash power who attends Yue? Izuku, yes. Midnight, and what are you doing here? Izuku, well I decided to investigate who the reporters entered here and I kind of figure it out. Midnight, really? Huh. Izuku, well I saw that the outside wall has been disintegrated so my guess would be that a villain was here. Midnight, that sounds serious, I should tell the other heroes. Izuku, I'll inform Principal Nezi since I have to give this to her. Shows notebook at Principal Nezi's office Nezi on the phone. So as I was saying we should she was about to finish her sentence there was a knock on the door. Nezi, hold up I will be with you in a bit. Hangs up the phone come in. Izuku enters the room. Nezi, ah, young Midoriya, what can I do for you? Izuku, I got the info on the Yakuza like you asked also I came to warn you. Nezi, what seems to be the problem? Izuku, I decided to investigate the wall and I saw that the wall was disintegrated and I have multiple reasons to believe that the someone is trying to send us a message. Nezi, this is really serious. Izuku, is there any sort of school event coming up? Nezi, well, your class is going to the USJ tomorrow. Izuku, can you ask some pro heroes to come to the USJ for backup? Nezi, I will contact some pro heroes for backup. Izuku, thank you. And with that Izuku went home but he made sure to pack extra weapons, be he was sure that tomorrow would be a long day elsewhere. Is everything ready? Shigaraki, yes, tomorrow the symbol of peace will die. I was in my room making new gadgets like some tasers, tear gas, smoke pellets, bolus and tracers. As everything was packed I drove to school and as everyone enter Aizawa and discuss what we're doing today. Aizawa. Today we're to do rescue training and going to a place to do all this training so get your hero costumes and wait for us outside. Eli, alright, rescue. Tsu, finally I get to show how good I am in the water rib bit Izuku. Alright, good thing I was prepared. As we change and went outside the class was wondering why my motorcycle was her while the others were staring in awe of my bike. Mina, Midoriya, why is your vehicle here? Izuku, well... Since we're doing rescue training my motorcycle can be helpful in those kinds of situations. See you, really? Huh. I press a button on my keys and my motorcycle changed in into its second form. I press a button on my keys and my motorcycle changed in into its second form now the entire class was in awe of my motorcycle Eli. Mito bro, why didn't you tell us about this? Momo, well I knew. Mina, stop keeping secrets from us Midori. Aizuku, hey. I don't need to tell you everything. Small time skip. We were walking towards the building however I pulled Tina to the side. Izuku, look Tina, I can't explain right now but when I tell you to go I need you to run back to UA and warn Principal Nezi. Tina, alright we'll do. We arrive at the training area and are met with the space hero Achiko. Wow, my favorite pro hero. Welcome. This is where we will practice rescuing, citizens in situations I call unforeseen simulation joint but you can all at the USJ. Class Dash, just like Universal Studios Japan. By the way Aizawa, where's Almighty? Aizawa, she had some business to take her off at UA so she will come later. Alright. As we enter the building I look around the building see a shipwreck zone, a fire zone and a city zone. Before we could even start I notice in the middle of the area a portal appears and a bunch of villains show up. Izuka mind, knew it. Eli, wow, we can fight fake villains too. Izuku, nope, those are real villains. Aizawa, everyone get back take care of the students. Izuku, Tina, now. Tina, on it. As she ran off, we saw a blue-haired woman with a bunch of hands all around her body and face and messy hair along with another woman who was just missed. As she ran off, we saw a blue-haired woman with a bunch of hands all around her body and face and messy hair along with another woman who was just missed Shigaraki. Name's Shigaraki and we are here to kill Almighty Shigaraki. Name's Shigaraki and we are here to kill Almighty. Before Mrs. Aizawa could do anything I rush past him heading straight for the villains. Class A, Midoriya slash Izuku slash Dekuch.
One villain with guns for hand aim at me so I jump over him and whack him with my baton. Another villain came up to me so I swept him off his feet and hit him with my baton. As one of the villain was about to sneak up on me, Mrs. Aizawa kicked him in the face and landed next to me. Aizawa, Midoriya, it's foolish of you to jump into battle. Izuku angrily, well, someone has to protect my classmates. Aizawa, Sayorite, I guess that you have a point. We saw the mist villain again, this time she teleported everyone to different areas in the USJ while some students actually avoided being teleported. Aizawa, DM in it. She separate the students. Izuku, don't worry I'll find them. Aizawa, ha. Izuku, I placed some tracers on them when they weren't looking. Aizawa, pretty smart and stealthy. I left and grabbed a device from my belt and saw where everyone else was I went to find that Momo, Jai. Dina landed together in an area one villain was about to sneak attack in on Momo so I jumped down and used my teacher to shock the villain. Izuku, shocking. Momo, Izuku. Jairu, what are we gonna do? Dina, this is different from combat training. Izuku, guys, listen. Yes, this is different from combat training and there are real villains, but we can't just stand around doing nothing, this is our chance to show that we are capable of handling these situations. To prove that we're not just heroes in training, that we're unstoppable. And once these guys are down, head towards the entrance of the USJ, that is our ticket out of here. Dina, where are you going? Izuku, I have to make sure no one gets left behind, we cannot leave without the entire class. Jairu, alright good luck. As I continue searching for my classmates and getting them to safety I noticed the mist woman was bringing something out of the portal, I saw some kind of giant bird-like creature. As I continue searching for my classmates and getting them to safety, I noticed the mist woman was bringing something out of the portal, I saw some kind of giant bird-like creature Izuka mind. What the hell is that thing? I noticed Mrs. Aizawa rushed in and started to fight the creature, giving me and the rest of my class enough time to get to the exit. And as we're running to the exit, I notice Mrs. Aizawa in a puddle of BLD. She's been injured by the bird creature. Shigaraki. Meet the anti-symbol of peace Nomu. As the Nomu was about to grab Mrs. Aizawa, I shot one of my destruction strings into its arm and it slowly started to turn into ash. Giving me a not time to pull Aizawa sensei to Momo. Izuku, Momo, make bandages and help Aizawa, I will deal with the Nomu. Azuko, that's suicide. But before anyone could say anything else I ran off, not stopping. Shigaraki, ehhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhhh
I still couldn't get the mysterious man out of my head and my mind was still filled with questions but I knew I had to stop thinking about it and focus. However, every time I went outside I still had a weird feeling like someone was watching me and I could see movement in the shadows from the corners of my eyes. I guess I will have to be more careful from now on and I will just have to wait and see what happens next. After the USJ incident, we were given a week off of school, I still kept my guard up though, I had a weird feeling that something weird was going on but I couldn't place it. Anyway, once we returned to school I was just looking out the window thinking about that mysterious man. Eva, hey Midoriya. Izuku, hey Kiri. Eva, it was cool what you did at the USJ. Rina, she is right, when the villains attacked we were scared, however you showed no fear. Izuku, eh, you're right, I don't seem to get scared that easily nowadays. As we continued to chat the door opened to reveal Aizawa sensei in bandages. Class, except Izuku, Thores Aizawa. Shoya, yes, I'm back and I am okay. Izuku, looks like we'll never get a sub. The whole class laughed at my joke. While Mrs. Aizawa gave a small smirk. Shoya, anyway, just want to inform you all that the annual sports festival is coming up. Class, except Izuku, sports festival. The sports festival was just like the Olympics but a bit different. There are three challenges and the final challenge is always a cork battle. Shoya, anyway before anything else, you must have your parents to fill up this form. Skip to end of the class as we tried to exit to go to lunch the students from the other classes were outside our door. Tina, excuse me, why are you blocking us? So you are the students that fought villains you don't seem like much? They see a girl with purple hair that resembled eraser heads so much due to the eye bags under her eyes. They see a girl with purple hair that resembled eraser heads so much due to the eye bags under her eyes Shinso. The name is Hitomi Shinso and we are here to declare war on you. Reason. It's because there is a way for us general education students and others that can get into the heroic course and it's by winning the sports festival. Izumi. <laughs> Good luck with that. Katsumi. <laughs> Do you seriously think you extras can win and get in? I'll blow your face off. Shinso, not really hero-like. See you, girls, let's not start a fight. Hey, you must be the class of scum that think they're better than us. The next person they saw was a silver-haired girl that was like a clone of Kirishima. The next person they saw was a silver-haired girl that was like a clone of Kirishima Tessa. The name is Tessa Tetsu Tetsu and I'm from class B of the heroic class and our lass will beat you all. Eva, hey girl, we don't think we're better than you and what's with all this hate? Shinso, don't even try to stop us, we are gonna win and there's nothing you or the male here that can do to beat us from getting into the hero course. Tessa, eat. and even if you do beat us, we can just as easily win against those villains and be popular. Suddenly, it got freezing cold and the hero class looked at Shoka thinking she was using her quirk but when they saw it wasn't her, they looked to the sour to see Izuku, however his eyes were no longer the soft emerald green that they were used to be. Instead they were a cold amethyst purple and having a menacing aura around him. Before anyone could do anything another boy with dark skin appeared flouting next to him who seemed to look like some sort of cat-like creature. Before anyone could do anything another boy with dark skin appeared flouting next to him who seemed to look like some sort of cat-like creature plague. You are a fool young mortal. Do you really think you could have won? That you will beat class A? Do you see this as some sort of game to you? They did not ask to be thrown into a villain fight but it happened because the villains wanted all mighty dead. They had a creature that was created for that purpose. They could have died if it weren't for their teacher and them fighting, and my little kitten here points at Izuku who had calmed down. He didn't have to fight, but instead he risked his life to save his classmates. They all could have died back there, and you think they wanted to be looked at as some strong heroes. They are all students here training to be heroes. But my question for you is what for? What is your reason you wish to be heroes? Money. Fame. Glory. To be the best. That shouldn't be your top priority, because you should be focusing on saving the lives of others. That's what's important. So don't tell me that you could have done better when you weren't there. As the boy finished his sentence the boy turned. Into a ball of green light and the light was pulled back into Izuku's ring. Izuku, consider yourselves lucky if he had his way, he would have turned all of you to dust. Now if you excuse us, some of us are not in a good mood when we're hungry, so could you be so nice and move aside. 
As soon as he said that the students backed away almost immediately, not wanting that incident to happen again. Izuku, as for you war declaration, we accept it with honor and to show to the world that we are the next generation of heroes and that should apply for all of us when we go out there. Also Shinso, with that frail of a body you won't get far in the festival so I would advise you to build some muscle first. Have a nice day ladies. The people of his class were quiet before following him to lunch. For the next two weeks, class had trained to their best and went past their limits in order for the sports festival. We now see them getting ready by putting on their gym clothes, when Shoka, Midoriya, Izuku, yes Todoroki. Shoka, you might be the strongest in the class but I am declaring I am going to beat you. Izuku, smirks is that a challenge? Shoka, yes. Izuku, alright I accept it. But come at me with your full power and don't come half our match. Shoka, I will win. Katsumi, I see hot, what about me? Shoka slash Izuku, you're a stepping stone. Katsumi growls at them and Izumi manages to calm her down and their names are called by Mike Izuku. Let's go and show what class is made of. Class A, yes as they walk out their locker room and headed towards the field they could hear the commentary of present Mike and their teacher Shoya Aizawa. Ms. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first year's sports festival. I am your commentator present Mike and my co-host is no other than my best friend Eraserhead. Shoya, why am I here? Mike, you are my best friend and you keep me company. Shoya, I really want to be asleep right now. Mike, I am hurt Shoya. Shoya, shut up and continue. Mike, right sorry, all right ladies and gentlemen this class was attacked by villains a couple of weeks ago and they survived with the help of their classmate who is the first ever male with a quirk slash power so let's give it up for class A. As the class A comes out and are greeted by screaming people, some of them were nervous, some were happy. But Izuku was smirking knowing he truly belonged in the hero course and is going to show what he is made of and help males get their rightful place back in society. At a bar Shigaraki, this is that boy I told you about, the monster. I see, so Hisashi, your son has grown up fast, make sure you keep an eye on him Shigaraki. Shigaraki, yes MSRS. Back at the festival Mike, now the second class of heroes class B. They came out and did receive some applause but not as much as Class A. They survived a villain attack, big whoop they are nothing compared to us. Mona, shut up will you? Mike, now for classes C, D, F as those classes came out and they were cheered but not as loud as they wanted, some were sad about this and some didn't want to be there. Why are they not cheering us on? Because of Class A more importantly, Izuka Midoriya aka that boy with black hair with the neon green hair streak? The one who single-handedly took down the monster meant to kill Almighty. Izuka glanced over to look at Shinso, she looked a bit more muscular which meant that she took his advice. As they prepared to start the festival, Midnight came out wearing her costume making all the males in the audience except Izuka blush and making comments about her. Tokoyami, isn't that a bit revealing for a high school game? Dina, agreed. Midnight, alright. Would the class a representative Izuka Midoriya come forward to give a speech? As he went towards the stage and stood in front of the mic he took a deep breath. Izuku, today is not about who has the most flashy quirk. It's nothing about that this is about showing the world that we are meant to be heroes. We will show that anyone can be a hero regardless if their quirk is weak, weird or villainous honor. If you have the heart of a hero then train with all your might, show those who didn't believe in you that you can do it. We are here to show the villains that we will bring peace to this world we will show that anyone can be a hero if they're hearted. Class A to F screw what people say about your quirk. Every quirk is unique. It's your own quirk. You can do whatever you want. You are the only one who is holding you back from your potential. Show the world that you are meant to be a hero to save people and that one day there will be a balance between males and females and everyone will be on an equal state in society again. As he stopped people cheered and those from the other classes began to cry knowing someone believed in them, that they can be heroes. Midnight, that was a appealing speech and thank you Midoya. Please go back to your classmates. As he went down he high five his classmates and rexived praises from them. The classes C through F came towards him and they bow to him, thanking him for giving them the courage to become heroes. Midnight, alright, this wheel will determine the first event of the festival. 
She spun the wheel and as she spun everyone is wondering what is the first event. As the wheel began to slow down it showed the event plus midnight. Obstacle race. Midnight. All right. The rules of the obstacle race are simple. You must cross the field from where the starting point is and will have to reach the finish line to go to the second event. You will face different challenges, obstacles and traps as you go. Only the top, meh, I believe this is right, will be able to pass. Let's get this show on the road. Everyone ready? Everyone was getting ready at the line. Some prepared their quirks and support items. Some were getting their game faces on. Get set. Izuka mind. All right, time to show everyone what I am made of. Goo. Meh. By the way, I am gonna make this part just by Izuka's POV BC, why not? Izuku quickly turned into a cheetah and got the head start, seeing Todoroki and catching up to her before running past her. Before anything else happens, I can hear a bunch of zero pointers from the entrance exam. I turn to my human form and use my destruction strings and turn all of them to dust before turning back into a cheetah and I kept on running. Mike, holy molly. Izuka Midoriya just destroyed all of the zero pointers without breaking a sweat and is the first one heading towards the tight ropes. Midnight, if you fall you are automatically disqualified from the race. Izuku, easy. Izuku turned into a cougar and jumped right across the hole and quickly transforming back into a cheetah, showing no signs of stopping. Makwa. Aizawa what on earth are you teaching your students? Shoya. I am not teaching them anything, Izuku is the strongest in my class who has trained himself in more ways than I could have ever tough him, his determination and unpredictable mind is the thing that makes him a dangerous individual to those he comes across, he is a monster on his own. Mike, you heard that folks, Aizawa is a horrible teacher. Shoya, what was that Mike, Mike, nothing. Sweat drop as Izuku kept running he heard explosions coming from behind him and he knew it was Katsumui, who was trying to catch up to him but he ignored it and kept running and seeing a huge bush wall. Midnight. The next stage is a maze, you can do whatever you want to pass through. Izuku turned into a normal black cat and climbed over the bush wall and kept running on top of the maze until he jumped off and continued to run. Midnight. Look at that folks, Izuka Midoriya has passed the third stage with Shoka Todoroki and Hitomi Shinso right behind him. As Izuku was running he saw that he almost at the finish line. Izuka saw the next stage and saw that it was a minefield. He used his cat senses to detect where they were and avoided them perfectly. Mike, holy molly ravioli. Izuka Midoriya is not setting off the mines. Shoka slash Hitomi, minefield. Midnight. That's right the final stage is a minefield. Be careful cause they pack quite a punch Shoka. Damn it Midoriya figured it out. Shinso, looks like I underestimated him. As Izuka sees the finish line he pulls out his baton and gives himself a final boost. As he flies through it and began to run when he reached the tunnel. Midnight, the first place goes to Izuku Midoriya. As the crowd cheered as he saw Shoka making second and Shinso in third. The rest came in one by one. Katsumi, damn it. Teach place. Izumi, teach place, not bad. As Tina came with the rest of their class. They see Izuku with some of their other classmates. Tina, Midoriya, you are fast. Izuku, thanks Ida, however I train my legs so I have to thank the one who trained me. Ida, maybe I should ask my big sister to help me with my speed. Izuku, maybe. Midnight came to the podium and the big wheel appeared again behind her. Midnight, the students who came in are advancing to the next stage and now, it's time to choose the next event for the second round. As she spun the wheel, the wheel spanned for at least a minute until it was slowing down and it stopped on midnight. The next event is a cavalry battle. You have minutes to make a team of the points depending on your place will be added as a group and the first groups with the highest points will advance to the next stage. Izuku. So, just ha. Huh? Midnight. All right, the points are the following th place points, place points. As she went on and on each point until reaching first place. Midnight, and finally, st places million points. Izuku, I see how this is now. As Izuku saw that most of the students were seeing him as a target, but with the training he went through he knew that he was gonna be all right. And controlling his emotions he smirked at them signaling them to bring it. Plus midnight, you now have minutes to choose your teams now. Go. Meh, 
Before I continue I just wanted to apologize for not posting for a long time, I was having serious otters block also I recently started going to another school and I haven't had much time to post I am once again really sorry. Midnight. Now, for new teams. No one was approaching me because I was a big target, but that part changed. Achiko. Hey, uh, de. let's be a team. Izuku. Thanks Achiko, for a second I thought I was on my own. Achiko. Come on, just because you have lots of points, I have no reason to stay away from my best friend. Izuku, alright we just need two more people. Meike. Let me join, I saw how your gadgets worked from the USJ security camera footage and they were amazing. Izuku. Oh, thanks, but who are you? Mei. I may hat some of the support department. Izuku. Alright, all we need is one more person and I know who. He searched through the crowd and he found the perfect person. Izuku. Hey, Tokoyami, join my team. Tokoyami. Seriously. Izuku. Yes, I need both you and Dark Shadow. Shadow me. Izuku. Yes, BC I have the perfect plan to win. Tokoyami. I am all ears. As I explained the plan everyone agreed and we got into positions. The cavalry battle started and immediately everyone rushed towards me but I knew this was gonna happen. Before the start of the battle I gave Ochako, Mei and Tokoyami some soundproof pods in their ears, then so once everyone rushed towards us I threw one of my ninja stars, meh. Mind you they are in the shape of a cat face. At the walls and pressed a button on my button and my ninja stars were making ultrasonic sound waves which everyone except my team were covering their ears so that distracted them long enough for us to take their headbands, then as we went for shokas, I noticed that Katsumi destroyed my ninja stars to stop the noise, after everyone calmed down they all noticed that their headbands were gone and that my team had them. Katsumi was able to snatch one headband, but it wasn't my million point one. Much later the cavalry battle ended and my team won. Also Shoka's team came second at Katsumi's came third and apparently team Tetsu Tetsu at fourth. After the cavalry battle Shoka wanted to talk to me, so I followed her so we could talk. What the two of them didn't know is that Katsumi and Izumi had followed them. In the hallway of the arena, both of them and Izuku is waiting for Shoka to talk. Izuku, you know we don't have all day, so, are you gonna talk or what? Shoka, today I broke my wove to never use my fireside. Izuku, and I'm guessing that is because of your mother, the NR hashtag hero endeavor. Shoka, yes. My mother has an obsession with beating Almighty and she was a woman with a mission, she decided to do something that made my BLD boil. Izuku, what? Shoto, have you heard of quirk marriages? Izuka shock, are you? Shoka, I am a product of that marriage. My mom bought my SPRM donor from my aunt's family with money. She gave BRH to my three other sisters. My mom called them failures until I was born, with both my mother and aunt's quirk, since then she trained me until I broke down. It broke down my aunt who lived with us at the time, that she gave me this scar BC my eyes reminded her of my mother. She poured boiling hot water into my eye, then she freaked out and that B asterisk tard put her into a mental hospital. Izuku. Dang that is rough. But at least you now have me and I will be there to support you if you ever need me. Shoka, thank you Midoriya, but I will defeat you so I can show that which her place. Izuka-sai, whatever you say. They walk back to the field where the final competition was gonna be held. Midnight, alright everyone. The next and final event is a battle tournament of versus these are the matches for the preliminaries round. Izuku Midriya vs Hitomi Shinso Shoka Todoroki vs Tina Ida Dina Kaminari vs Mina Ashido Fumi Tokoyami vs Achiko Yurarika Izumi Midriya vs Momo Yurosur Hana Siro vs Katsumi Bakugo Ibra Shizaki vs Itsuka Kendo Tessa Tetsutetsu vs Eva Kirishima Midnight. The first battle is Izuku Midriya vs Hitomi Shinso. Will both contestants stay and the others please go where your class is seated at? Achiko. Good luck Dekakuen. Tina, we'll cheer you on. Izuku, thanks. Midnight, are you both ready? Izuku, yes. Shinso, yes. Midnight, begin. We see Izuku rushing towards Hitomi and tries to take her down. Hitomi tries to brainwash him. Shinso, aren't you trying to get Almighty to notice you? However, Izuku being a genius and all, he had learned to control his emotions and didn't answer the question. 
which irritated Hitomi a lot. Shinso, so the great and powerful male of class A is scared to answer about his favorite hero. Izuku was getting angry but he cracked his finger to make snap him out of the anger. Izuku grabs his baton and swipes Hitomi's legs from under her and kicks her out of the boundary. Midnight, Hitomi Shinso is out of bounds, the winner is Izuku Midoriya. The stadium went on cheering on for Izuku who won so easily. Izuku then went towards Shinso and reached his hand to help her up. Izuku, I am not trying to impress anyone. I am doing this for me. I don't need anyone's approval, screw what people say about me. Also I think, it is about time someone said these words that no one has told you in many years. Shinso, what? As Izuku turns around and smiles and looks back at her with his angelic smile. Izuku, you can be a hero. As he walks away Hitomi starts to cry BC someone finally someone said the words that everyone had not told her in years. Once she stopped tearing up she looked back at him with a smile. Hitomi mind. Izuku Midoriya, from now on I pledge that I will work even harder so I can stand by your side. The rest of the battles came out as I thought. Though Eva and Tessa were in a tie but Eva beat her in an arm wrestling match and Momo was sad BC she lost to Tokoyami and she never got to fight. When it was Achiko's match against Katsumi I was surprised that she still continued to fight but later she lost so I left to go check on her. Izuku, man, that was one crazy match. Ochako, yeah, but shouldn't you go, your match with Shoka is next. Izuku, I just wanted to know if you're okay. Ochako, good luck Izuku. Izuku, thanks. As I was about to leave I heard Ochako having a phone conversation with her parents and after that she started to cry. Izuku, Achiko what's wrong? Ochako, oh I didn't know you were still here, well sniff, sniff, I feel like I let my parents down, how can I give them the life they deserve if I can't defeat my classmates, I'm worthless. I ran towards her and gave her a tight hug, which surprised her a bit. Izuku, Yuraraka, listen to me. You are not worthless, you always think of others but, sometimes you need to put yourself first. Yes, saving people is the number priority of a hero, but mental health is also important, so don't doubt yourself, it's not about winning, it's about showing your best. Achiko, thanks Aizu, I'm glad to have a friend like you. Izuku, I should get going my match is gonna start soon. Achiko, good luck. As Izuku was making his way he ran into a certain flaming trash woman endeavor. Ah, you must be one of my creation's friends, all I ask is for you to make her use her fire endeavor. Ah, you must be one of my creation's friends, all I ask is for you to make her use her fire. Izuku, she is you daughter not your tool, she told me all the stuff you did to her. So don't even think about making her life a bigger hell and I'm going to save her from your BS. Endeavor, what did you just say boing? Suddenly the air turned freezing cold which confused Endeavor and made her look around. When she turned to look at Izuku she saw the boy's eyes turning colors. One turned to amethyst purple and the other was a dark sapphire blue and they emitted a cold aura. Izuku slash plague. Don't even think about insulting us, mortal. You are no match for our might and we are gonna save your family from you. We don't care what they say or how strong they are. They need to know that someone f asterisk asterisk ing cares for them bc you obviously don't. In a blink of an eye Izuku's eyes turned back to normal and he walked past Endeavor but stopped after a few steps. Izuku too. And another thing, your eldest daughter is still alive. Once he said that Endeavor started to stutter in a panicked voice. Endeavor. www. Izuku, your eldest daughter Tuya Todoroki is still alive. Although she goes by the name of the cremation villain. Dobby and she going to go after you to ruin your reputation so I would advise you to watch your back. And so Izuku walked away leaving Endeavor in a panicked state and not noticing Shoka and Achiko who caught the two in the conversation and leaving Shoko in state of pure shock of the revelation of her sister turning into a villain. Katsumi and Izumi who were following Deku to probably trying to insult Deku before his match. And a mysterious man who had a big smirk on his face happy that the boy had stood up for himself. Mind, Izuku, you have grown up so much, I can't wait for us to finally meet and for me to teach you everything I know.